rotate elements in a matrix. Let's find out how to answer this question in a technical interview. To begin with, let's take a sample matrix. If we were to rotate it by one element each in the clockwise direction, this is how we might start. We will start with say suppose 5 moving to 1's position and then 1 moving to 2's position and so on. Once we finish with all the elements in the outermost ring, then we can jump on to the next ring, that is the inner elements. For the inner ring too, we follow the same process. 10 will move to 6th position, 6 will move to 7th position and so on. So we follow the same process for each and every ring and the number of rings will depend on the size of the matrix. So now we have an algorithm in place. How do we go about writing pseudocode for this? In order to write pseudocode for this, we will start off with four variables here. The row, the column, the max row and the max column. These four variables will help us keep track of the boundaries of the rows and columns with which we are working for a specific ring. So as we discussed, we start off with reading this value 5 in the variable previous. Then we loop through the top row and the variables column and max column help us keep track of our first for loop. And in this for loop, what we are essentially doing is moving 5 to 1's position, moving 1, 2 and 3, 1 position to the right. And at the end of for loop, our variable previous will hold the number 4. So once we are done with the topmost row, we can increment this row variable by 1. Next, we move on to the last column. So in this case, our for loop runs from the variable's row to max row. So what we are essentially doing again is moving 4 to 8's position, 8 to 12, 12 to 16, and at the end of the for loop, our variable previous will hold the value 16. So once we are finished with the last column, we follow the same process for the bottom row as well as the first column. We will write two more for loops in a similar fashion. In order to keep track of the ring with which we are working, we can have an outer for loop from 0 to n divided by 2, where n is the size of a square matrix. However, this technique will work only in case of a square matrix. For a rectangular matrix, the size n over 2 might not make much sense. So instead of using the for loop, what we can do is we can write a little bit more generic approach. We can just check for while row is less than max row and column is less than max column, we keep on continuing our four for loops. I'll be posting the link to the full pseudocode as well as the working solution in C sharp in the video description. I would highly recommend that you try writing your own pseudocode first and try out the solution on your own before downloading or looking at the pseudocode and the final code. In the actual interview, please make sure that you are taking care of all the various edge cases to make sure that your solution is very robust. If you have followed all these steps, then I would say that you have successfully answered the interview question related to matrix rotation. For more such interview questions, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Coach for Dev. Until next time, happy coding.